Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. My name is Colin Mahern, and this is the pre-show for the PC Gaming Week spot. I am here, of course, with one Matthew Castle. Matthew, how are you? <laughs> I'm well. This this is good because we get to be a, a little bit more, you know, a little bit more chilled. You know, we can we can really bring it down before we bring the energy in a minute. But um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like I like that we are our own warm up act. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Who mm. who who needs a a two bit stand up when we bring all the comedy? I don't need some some fucking I don't know Jim Davidson wannabe coming on here and telling terrible jokes when we can do it ourselves. That might actually that might actually do very well in this current age. <laughs> that is true, or, sadly. You know, yeah, you're just... on YouTube. Does I I did see that he he has started some JD TV thing basically because no television show will will air his stuff which is good although BBC probably no which is a shame um, seeing as what Matthew explain that to me what is right wing comedy uh well I don't know if it really exists is to be honest isn't yeah. that the problem that is the, that is the problem yet the Beeb or well whatever the new director the new tony hairs is trying to tell us that it, it, there it, there is such a thing it's very confusing well um, apparently that, apparently that's not true apparently he didn't say that at all it's that's made up by the newspapers is that right didn't yes know that. Uh, stuart lee was saying that actually he was talking at the the new director general was talking on a podcast and was saying no like you know you have to kind of punch up at authority and that's the nature of satire and blah, blah, blah. Oh. Oh, well, that's that's good. What a terrific note to so start. Yeah, what, a, what, a great, what a great pre-show that is. Yeah, we got into was, a little bit of the BBC's political leanings. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it doesn't all have to be a laugh a minute, Matthew, because we'll do that now for the next two hours. Hello and welcome to the PC Gaming Week Spot. <laughs> there my name is Colm Arne. and I felt I'm just gonna have to, have to bring that down a little bit because I felt like I was going very it's a bit of paddy whackery in that Ugh, disgusting oh dear. but uh, yes please. my name is Colm Ahern and joining me today is the wonderful the dapper Mr. Matthew Castle hello. Matthew, hello Matthew yeah that's this is the part where you speak to them how are hello. you how are I'm you dressed up for Spielberg you are, you are indeed, because, you know, this week it's going to happen, along with a number of other things. So do you know what, Matthew? Let us just get into it. Here's coming up. Here's what's coming up. Easy for me to say on the show. Yep. Uh, in headlines and hot takes, you have come to the right place if you want to know all about NVIDIA's new suite of graphics cards, because tech gurus, Colin Hearn and Matthew Castle, are going to take you through <laughs> oh, Jesus, everything you need that. to know. Um, we're also <laughs> going to be talking a little bit about what Hello Games, developer of No Man's Sky, Joe Danger, what they're up to next. And is there a remake of Prince of Persia on the cards? Perhaps. More on that later. And in Show and Tell, where we talk about the games that we've been playing, Matthew actually has said to me that Marvel's Avengers decent. There's a direct quote from the man himself. We'll find out more on that later. Also, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is exactly what it should be. A nostalgia-filled, wonderful, terrific, exciting game. And Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning. We get some impressions from... <laughs> that is uh, so nondescript. <laughs> well, I was like, I can't remember what Matthew thinks of Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning, so... And this video needs to be <laughs> so exported right some now. Impressions. Uh, indeed. Also, Mystery Steam Reviews, the hit new quiz segment, Sweeping the Nation. The current score is 3-2 to call him. The Castle Comeback indeed is on. Can he, can he tie it this week? Well, he's the bookie's yes, favourite. Yes, he uh, will. Also, we take questions from you, the lovely viewers, in a segment we like to call Burning Questions. And yes, the man himself. It is a long time coming. Beloved director... Of Titanic, Steven Spielberg is going to be Steven on the show. Spielberg himself. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, yeah, Matthew, I know, I know it's uh, something that it has been a long time coming. 
we've had a lot of issues, I suppose, with, you know, last week, I do hold my hands up, actually. Last week was my issue uh, when I didn't reschedule. Like, I, I didn't account for Americans not having a bank holiday and it just got a little iffy. So I do apologize. And I know I've done it behind closed doors, but I want to do it in a public forum now. I, I am mm. sorry, Matthew. Everything is set up. Don't you worry. You will be talking to your hero later oh, this evening. Right. I cannot wait. I've got so many good questions. I've been sitting on them for a while, but I'm mm. ready to ask them. Yeah, no, it, it's going to be fabulous. But Matthew, before we get on to that, let us talk about some of the news that's been happening in uh, in video games this week in a segment that we like to call Headlines and Hot Takes. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. Um, so before it gets we get less in- impressive every week, <laughs> before we get into uh, the meat of what was admittedly a slow enough news week, uh, there are a couple of tidbits. So do you want me to to fire these into your news gob? What, what did you say? Get them in there. Get them in yeah. there. <laughs> So, uh, Matthew, a bit of sad news to start off. After oh, ten- no. Don't <laughs> sad news into the news, Gob. I don't well, want bitter it, news. Um, after oh. 10 years, developer of Nuclear Throne, Super Crate Box, Ridiculous Fishing, Luft Rousers, uh, Vlambeer, mm. they're closing their doors. Um, they have one more game, Ultra Bugs, which is coming to Steam sometime in the future. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, as far as I'm aware and what I've seen, it's kind of a pretty amicable split and they're just, you know, just going their separate ways after a pretty successful run. Any any particular favours of Lambier's catalogue? I like that early one where you got the weapons in the boxes. That was Super, Super Crate Box, wasn't it? Yeah. Super Crate Box. Mm. Uh, Ridiculous Fishing was mine. I, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, do you remember that one at all? I, I, did that come to PC? That was definitely on iOS. Uh, I've only I've only played Super Gunbox. Uh Super Gunbox, yeah. Uh also Chivalry 2, Matthew, it's been delayed until 2021. Developer Torn Banner Studio said, "We believe this updated timeline is necessary to allow Chivalry 2 to be the greatest game it can be." Well, uh, Chivalry me Timbers. And also a game that is coming out this year. On the, yeah. on the 29th of September, to be exact, Spelunky 2 is coming to Steam, which I know they were talking about weeks after the uh, PlayStation version, but I think isn't that, I don't know, it's it's, ba- it's barely about a fortnight. So that is, that's pretty good news to hear that us on our personal computers will be able to Spelunk with the best of them. But Matthew. I can't wait to Spelunk. Can you close your tidbit gob and open your headline muncher and uh let us as i said off the top you know if you want to know about ray tracing and um (laughs) other things that graphics cards do then you have definitely (laughs) come to the right place uh (laughs) so uh yes while i load up the we've made a video comparing gaming on a 60 um, Yes, NVIDIA did reveal their uh, their new suite of graphics cards, uh, the 30 series. And rather than me try and rattle things off, I'm going to give you the words of our hardware editor, Catherine Castle. Um, so, uh, yeah, these new cards are based on the new Ampere GPU architecture. The cards themselves are the, the RTX 3070, the RTX 3080, and the RTX 3090. Uh, yeah. And their their release, their, their launches are staggered. The um, 3080 is the first one coming on the 17th of September, whilst the 3090 will be on the 24th of September, and the 3070 will be coming in sometime in October. All of the cards will come with a free copy of Watch Dogs Legion. And well, that's, a, that's, the big, I mean, that's the big headline here. <laughs> um, well, oh, they normally do, to be fair. Oh, they get... Yeah. Um, Nvidia's cards do come with like whatever the the hit new game is. I think my my last graphics card that I got came with was it the Crew Two or something, which was a bit upsetting. But you know, you, you get what you're given, I suppose. Uh, but the cards will also come with a year subscription to GeForce Now, which is Nvidia's cloud gaming service. Um, the only thing you ever hear about GeForce Now is people pulling their games from GeForce Now. 
It's uh, always a bit bleak. It is, and I, I think it sounds like I've, I've never messed around with it myself, but it sounds like a cool, a cool song. It does sound cool. No? I'm just saying that you only ever hear negative things. Yeah, it's no, a bit you do. Like you only the, the only news you ever hear about planes is plane crashes, isn't it? You, you never hear about those successful journeys. Yeah, it's a shame, you know. Like on, on the news this evening, a Ryanair flight landed on time. Well done, Ryanair. Uh, the uh, yeah, the cards. So the the pricing of the cards, which is you know that's the main thing people want to hear. Uh, the thirty ninety, which is that's the the big boy, and I think what Nvidia called the uh, what did they call it? The B the, that was it. The BFGPU uh, that is going to cost thirteen hundred and ninety nine pounds or fourteen hundred ninety nine dollars. Um, whilst the the mid tier card, the thirty eighty, is going to be priced at six hundred and forty nine pounds or six hundred ninety nine dollars, and the thirty seventy will be four hundred sixty nine pounds or four hundred ninety nine dollars. Now, I suppose to those maybe not in the know, you go, you know, none of these are cheap as chips, but they are actually reasonably priced because the thirty eighty, wow. which they're which they're calling, well, well yeah, let me, you know, yeah. reasonably priced in in comparison because the thirty eighty. Um, is the like that? That's their kind of like middling card here, but uh, up against some of their current cards on the market, like it it does give uh, give users quite a considerable power boost. Um, yeah, like all all these cards, uh, they double ray tracing performance. There's four K sixty. Uh, the thirty ninety apparently gives you eight K sixty. Um, yeah, but there's, there's not a lot of 8K. Well, you know, there are, uh, yeah, some, yeah, there yeah. are some 8K TVs. Catherine was saying to me before we recorded this that that one's that's dumb. Is it a bit, bit because <laughs> I like, am paraphrasing? No. She said it. She said something very complicated, and I have boiled it down to that's dumb. <laughs> uh, well, I mean. It, yeah, like it, it's kind of diminishing returns. Like if somebody says this, we give you twenty five k. 3,000 frames well, it's per second. It's like, basically, like by the time that 8K screens are prevalent and reasonably priced and are no longer sort of, you know, are out of that sort of sh- shitty first phase that everything has, mm-hmm. there'll be many more 8K card products on the market by then. Yes. You know? Yes, So indeed. the idea of buying now... Indulgent. It's indulgent, I tells you. Uh, there's also... Something called NVIDIA Reflex, which reduces the latency by quite a bit. And uh, this thing called NVIDIA Broadcast, which is, um, uh, I don't believe it's streaming software as such, but allows you tinker with your setup. So you it, it, uh, you can give like virtual green screen, like in chroma key out, just, you know, your wall and your shit behind you. Uh, it also bundles in their, uh, what's the name of their noise suppressing tech? It won't come to me, but that's included as well. Um, like, so, yeah, go on. T- take it away, Matthew. That, I was going to say, the, th- the thing that jumped out and the thing that Catherine was excited about uh, was the idea of the 3070 being 470-ish pounds and is basically a little bit better than their last flagship card which was the 2080 ti which was is still like plus 1000 yeah it costs so you know or or, or thereabouts and so it's like a huge you know for the for the money it's 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 a huge leap for a lot less um but i don't know i always find it very complicated with these things because there's so many different things you know different setups like what you're actually looking to achieve you know like you know if you're going for the if you've got a lovely 4k screen then you're going to want one thing you know i i personally have got a 1440p monitor and then you know so i'm just trying to get the best i can get out of that and so for my money i think the 3070 sounds like it would do more than enough for what i need uh- yeah, I would probably be similar, but I suppose the good thing is that whilst the thirty ninety is that's ludicrous, like you know, a, a grand and a half. That's a lot of money to be spending on a graphics card, uh, and many people don't have that money. Uh, but the at least that thir- the thirty eighty does 
it's it's an achievable card, you know, in comparison to say, um, like you mentioned that the comparable one would be the the card that currently costs whatever it is, eleven hundred or twelve hundred on the market now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like there is also um, I think today actually uh, there are rumors about about AMD announcing their next suite of cards. Um, which you can read about on rockpapershotgun.com. Because Matthew, I think we have exhausted graphics card, but I think oh, we yeah. have done. I think we've done very well, actually. I'm very proud of I us. Th- listen, I think we kind of got through that mainly because Catherine told us exactly what to say, so that we exactly. didn't totally shit the bed. It I did. just, I must admit, I'm, I, you know, I personally and on the channel, like, we've always slightly shied away from hardware talk because it mm-hmm. absolutely terrifies me. It's, and... it's 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 not our forte. It's not our forte. <laughs> um, um, so, like, I honestly read so I read the Digital Foundry piece about it and didn't like. Half, I don't understand half the words in that article. <laughs> I feel I feel very dumb. Um, eh, you know, like we we have we have other uh, other strings to our bow, like big massive universes. Like No Man's Sky, a game that I believe you're fond of. Uh, I think anyway, Why or at least say in, this? In, I don't know. <laughs> See, I, it, uh, it leaves me in a position where I then have to deny it, and I sound like a you know a curmudgeon. Oh, I do, but I, I thought you've covered No Man's Sky. Maybe fa- yeah, it's, fond uh, of it's, his fond of his strong. Then you've covered I was, No Man's Sky. I was Sky. fond of all the views our tips video got. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, um, but uh, yes, uh, this isn't No Man's Sky. You know, related. It's No Man's Sky adjacent, I suppose. Uh, so Sean Murray of uh, Hello Games, he was speaking to uh, to Polygon recently, and he was discussing. Uh, yeah, just a number of different things, I suppose, about about the studio. Uh, but the main uh, piece of news to come from this interview was that Murray described the next game that is in development at Hello Games as a, quote, huge, ambitious game like No Man's Sky. Now, we'll talk about that in a moment because Murray did also add... Uh, where's the quote? It's here. The choice that we had with No Man's Sky, where if I was to go back again, I would find it very difficult to know what the right path was. Where you will have incredible interest in your game, you will have a huge amount of excitement for it, but you will be in a rocket ship launching towards the sun and you will be building that rocket on the way up. A lot of opportunities were put in front of us and we were told that they were the right things to do. And I look back and I'm not sure that they were super, super important to the overall outcome kind of thing. Um, So I suppose saying, when Sean Murray says a huge ambitious game like No Man's Sky, I know uh, the ears of many will will kind of uh, will perk up because eventually or they'll, sort of shut, they'll shut down in like or the they'll shut down yeah, yeah but, like mm. because no man's sky i think got there in the end but it took a couple of years and as you say some other people's ears just closed just shut instantly because uh, uh i suppose it, it, the the um all, all the interviews he did beforehand when he was on like Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and all the other Jimmys in America, uh, they did leave a bad taste in the mouths of many. So uh, I suppose my question to you is: Do do you want to see Hello Games go down this route? Like go go like I, I will say we don't know what the game is. We don't know anything about it. He has just said huge and ambitious like No Man's Sky. He's not saying it's a space game or anything like that. Hmm. But like would you would you prefer to see Hello Games? you know, continue on this trajectory or would you like to see them go the last campfire route, which is a game that they released recently, stealth released, I think, wasn't it? I think they announced it's out tomorrow type of thing. Uh, we knew it was coming, but uh, mm-hmm. I know that you've played the last campfire. Like, mm-hmm. do you, do you like those more condensed experiences from? from yeah. Them? So the, the last campfire is kind of weird in that it was made by like a small group of developers within the studio. Um, you know, Hello Games, when they made Joe Danger, were a team of four, I think. And mm. Last Campfire was made by a team of three. So sort of like almost embedded within Hello Games. So it's not, it's it's sort of, I guess it's one step up from Hello Games publishing another team's game. It's, you know, they made it in-house, but they felt like um, 
the, the wording almost felt like they'd been brought in specifically to make this thing. I think the the okay. kind of lead the lead on the last campfire, I think, made their Joe Danger like iOS ports or the iOS versions. So it was sort of nice. like a kind of a, a regular collaborator with them. Um uh well, where was I going with that point? Um no, so I think whatever your thoughts on No Man's Sky, uh it sort of it feels like the work of a much bigger studio. You know, whatever you think of, course, of Hello yeah. Games and say about Hello Games, like they clearly have some incredibly bright people who are, you know, they're sort of able to punch above their weight. They've made this great big thing. Um, you know, especially the way it's evolved. You know, I think some of the some of the updates and the kind of the not expansions, but the way they've kind of changed the game um, are like pretty radical and exciting uh, most most definitely like there was that was it no man's sky next and then no man's sky beyond and like they added tons of stuff like they because yeah, when this I, when this first came out people thought it was going to be a big massive space mmo where you could run around with your friends and then wasn't it that your friends would appear but as like little floating orbs that you couldn't actually interact with and the world didn't really feel alive but a couple of years after the fact it did get there but it it did still take a couple of years you know um yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely and 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 so i think my point would probably be that i am i think the team that has the talent it has to see them try ambitious things is exciting i mean team size is sort of mad because obviously you've got your like 500 600 sort of ubisoft behemoths Mm. Um, but the size of Hello Games, I think there's like, I think there was like 20, 20, 20, 20 ish, of them, yeah. 25. Um, you know, it's like the size of a AAA thing, you know, 20 years ago. You know, that's mm. the kind of, your kind of team size that we're making your, you know, your classics, at, you know, Goldeneye and things like that. So, you know, maybe it's just a different era of like a kind of a return to those sort of, that kind of that those kind of times where just everyone's a bit more accountable on a team, uh, and you you can still make big expensive things, and the the label indie doesn't really mean a huge amount. Um, not massively, no, not massively. Uh, but I'm yeah, I, like I'm 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 into them. I think they've probably learned some important lessons about how they frame their game and how they build anticipation. Um, you know, he definitely had a touch of the touch of the Molyneux. Um, in some of the original pitching of it, which is mad because yeah. what it is is more than ambitious enough. If they just pitched it honestly, I think they'd have had. Like, I, you know, I still think there would have been excitement. You know, uh, it, the the, the yeah. stuff which they went, the stuff they didn't like deliver on. I don't think is actually the stuff anyone really cared a huge amount about. I I, I feel, but mm, yeah, uh, yeah, I I feel I feel like anytime Sean or uh, whatever Sean Murray said, uh. Like, it, it wasn't like he was, you know, because like people got unbelievably cross uh, as if, oh, my God, he's lying. And it's like, I don't, I, I never, or I don't think that he was at any point lying. I think he was hopeful that, like, this will be in the game and this will be in the game and this will be in the game. Yeah. And maybe just kind of got carried away. Like, even in that interview that uh, we're referencing, he said, he, he is kind of saying in so many words that, like, certain people were saying certain things to him. So, Maybe somebody was saying, yeah, go on, say that, Sean. Go on, you know, it'll drum up excitement. Mm. Um, but one thing that is certainly drumming up some bit of excitement in the last couple of days, Matthew, is Word of a Prince of Persia remake. Now, this has been doing the rounds with a while. Um, and I I think even at points, I was going to reference it on the weak spot, but then didn't because there was nothing concrete. But... Over the last couple of months, we've had uh, URLs spotted by people that have then de- be, uh, then been debunked. And then we've had, what was another thing? Uh, oh, there was like a Twitter handle that was set up and somebody tracked the IP address to some, some person or whatever. But uh, in the last week, there's definitely been more talk of it because uh, Jason Schreier of Bloomberg on his podcast, Triple Click, he said that a remake is triple in the works. Click. Yes. What does that mean? What's a triple click? Uh, other than the obvious, I don't know, to be honest. What, what's it achieve? 
Is it a triple click tool? Or maybe a triple click is a tri- could you be saying like a triple click is, you know, it's better than a double click? Like it's Yeah, but, uh, but what 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 use is a triple click? Like um, you double click stuff to start it, don't you? What's a triple click do. actually do? Maybe it starts it with more gusto. I don't know anyway, um, that's yeah, the, a, this... That's, uh, that's a stupid name for a podcast, says the person on something called The Weak Spot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this remake is reportedly going to be showing up in uh, Ubisoft's upcoming Ubisoft Forward, which is taking place this Thursday, along mm. with Immortals Phoenix Rising, probably, Ooh, which la is... La. Which, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a Prince of Persia remake, Matthew. And also, they don't say, or the, yeah, Jason Schreier didn't say at any point what what this remake could be. So we don't know, is it going to be like a sort of a, a collect, if this is, does go, uh, come to pass, will it be a collection? Or will it be from uh, like the most recent trilogy or whatever? Like the last Prince of Persia game was in 2010. The Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. Is it time, Matthew? For for a for a new Prince of Persia or at least a remake. Uh, well, yeah, I, I I'd say a, like a reboot or a new thing, rather than a. Oh, you think a re? Like, oh, okay. Not a remake. I don't want to. Re- I don't. I don't want to play an old Prince of Persia game again. Like I've played them. You know, is that what is that what we're talking about? I mean, uh, like. Yeah, but, it, you know, if it's all shiny and nice, like, there's a game we're going to be talking about later. There's two games we're going to be talking about later. But, like, they, that are, Forgotten Sands sort of was a reboot of Sands of Time. Because even though it, yeah, came, okay. it came out at the same time as the film, it wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal. Or, was that Prince of Persia? That was Prince yeah, of Persia. Yeah, where he, where he, was, he was, was Prince Dastan. Yeah, I remember that film. It was a, it, you know, the game was a, a Prince thing and and it was uh slightly more arabian nights romantic mystical rather than do you know how prince of persia started off brilliantly in sands of time and then went mm-hmm. all kind of gothy and he was being chased by like satan or something <laughs> it, was, time, it sure. was it got pretty heavy in uh the warrior within and the, what was the other one uh sands of time warrior within and it's like the it wasn't the dark prince the dark the something the other half the dark uh, the two the, the the two prince the two <laughs> two two princes uh, two we princes adore you um I don't know but it, yeah yeah so like you would be but is is Prince of Persia the series for that because I think well the the, the elephant in the room is obviously Sam Fisher like that's that's the one that people I think want is the one that I want well that. Like in uh, uh, dormant uh, Ubisoft franchises, it would be like Splinter Cell, Rayman, if you can call Rayman dormant. I don't know, Splinter Cell, yeah, somewhere below there. I like then- I like Prince of Persia. I like platformy games. Um, I don't really know where it fits into their what Ubisoft do, considering all their games are like big map, open worldy map games. Like Prince of Persia is a ten hour single player game, like in its best form. Uh, because Assassin's Creed one kind of is open world Prince yeah. of Persia, yeah. you know. So the the idea of I you know that there's a big I wouldn't want them to just open world Prince of Persia. You know, it's a it's a nice platforming challenge, and for that reason, I can't really see why they'd why they'd make it. Where Sam Fisher, well, same thing with Sam Fisher, really. You know, it's 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 a it's a story driven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose they the both franchises don't really sit in Ubisoft's current model, but. Is Assassin's Creed, does that not fill the Prince of Persia acrobatic action style No, because hole? you don't control it. You, you know, you hold a button and he does it for you. Prince of Persia, Ooh. like... Ooh, meow. Well, no, it, it, well, no, but it, that's, that's the whole setup, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's no, not... It is. it's, it's, it's like, where do you want to go rather than can you go there? Where Prince of Persia is, you've got to go here, can you do it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like Prince of Persia more than Splinter Cell if it's going to come down to, like, if we had to choose between one or the other, Ooh. I'd I'd pick I'd pick Sands of Time, Forgotten Sands esque Prince of Persia. Um, although I did like Splinter Cell Conviction, I didn't like I wasn't wild about Blacklist or whatever that last I, one. Was I really called. liked Blacklist. I really did like it. I I, I mean it didn't have um, what's his chops Ironside. I get that, but I, yeah, I, I I really liked it. It felt like a modern Splinter Cell game. 
But uh, sadly, Splinter Cell is I like dead. It he, I like it when he shoots everyone in the heads. That's, yeah. The mark and execute. That was good. That, it, that was good, yeah. Uh, but as I say, quite a relatively slow news week, but coming off of Ubisoft Forward this week, we're probably going to have more on the show yes. for you next week. Plus, we have a lot of games that we've been playing over the last week, Matthew, so let's not waste any more time and begin to show and... Tell. <laughs> show and tell. Show and tell. We can't afford... A proper jingle. Jingle. It's meant to be jingle. That's so shit, isn't it? I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, Matthew Castle. Um, yes. This, it feels like the weak spots game that our journey with this particular video game has evolved over the last couple of weeks. And um, I say our, I mean your journey with this game. You've gone from just... Uh, your heart was filled with hate, but then you played mm. the, you played the beta. You were like, eh, "This seems all right." And now, so what, we... what you're actually describing is someone who didn't know what the hell they were talking about, and then they played it, and then they formed an educated opinion. <laughs> it's it's the games journalist way, um, and uh, yeah, you have been playing Marvel's Avengers. So, for those that don't know, do tell what is Marvel's Avengers. Who Marvels. are they? Who are the Avengers? Uh, so it's an ITV these, drama. Yep. They're these, uh, they're these heroes, right? Mm-hmm. And um, no, it is a... It's Crystal Dynamics takes Avengers and does a bit of the old RPG loot em up games as service. Um, but what is odd about it is, and what I like about it, is the campaign, which feels like at one point there maybe was just a straight Marvel's uh, single-player game. Right. And then someone grafted this game as a service onto it because there's literally levels where it's just you playing as one hero. There's lots of scripted stuff. There's set pieces. There's boss fights. And then there's the kind of the rest of the game, which is just like generic rooms where you smash things for loot. So it feels very odd. I am sort of still playing around with the campaign stuff. I haven't done much of the the explory around. Uh, you've got this like war map where you can go and war table where you can go and do lots of little missions um, full of daft things. So I've mainly been just enjoying the campaign kind of doing a few little extra copy bits on the side, I guess. Um, and I really like its tone. I think it's actually, like, has quite a sort of fun... Sort of, it's pitched quite nicely. It's not, like, super dark. It's not, like, completely comic booky, weightless either. It's 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 got a bit of, like... I don't know, it's sort of fun. Like, it, it's different to the films. Um, okay. It's not just trying to copy the films. It's very much about, like... The thrill of seeing superheroes doing cool stuff together, um, which I guess happens in the films. You know, they have those shots yeah. in most where they sort of. Um, I'm thinking more of the first two Avengers films where they kind of do that rotating around them, and they're all kind of like yeah. landing and they're doing path, path, path. This feels a little bit like that. The game, in that there's bits where you're like you're playing as stretching woman or what, I can't remember her name. Stretching uh, woman, spot on, yeah. Miss Marvel? Is she Miss Marvel? It's a, it is Miss Marvel, yeah. I get this Captain Marvel as well. Um, you know, she, she's all giant and she's stretched herself giant and it's like smashing stuff and the Hulk's going like bat shit in the background and maybe there's an Iron Man flying around and you're like, oh yeah, this is all right. This is quite fun. Like there's a lot of people doing a lot of chaos, which is kind of the, my favourite thing about this kind of game, this sort of looty RPG character uh character driven kind of action game like it's what i like about borderlands warframe destiny is when you've got lots of people doing quite spectacular stuff together it's just fun to look at um and so you've got that that sort of side of it but then you've also got this campaign where i actually think given the that you know a lot's been said about how the game doesn't have like the official like the actors from the films and Mm. it was going to be greatly diminished because of that. I actually think the 
the, the, the voice acting is pretty good. I think the characters, they, they feel like their sort of own interpretations. They don't just feel like budget versions of the film characters. Like they basically made their own version of the Avengers. Um, and it kind of works mainly because of Miss Marvel, um, this Kamala Khan. I think yeah, she's yeah. Because yeah. um, the game sort of through her eyes as she sort of, she's sort of assembling the Avengers and she's, she's the sort of first character you have. And from her, you're kind of going around and meeting other people and actually framing it that way is quite good as like, not that you don't need a introduction to the Avengers. Everyone knows who they are, but it's quite fun to see sort of heroes through the eyes of this character. who's like a super fan, which I quite like the writing on her is quite good. I think like the that, first that, is, that is good to hear because in the beta, I, I thought it was okay, but I, I I could see how over the course of a campaign it would get a tad annoying, I suppose. But you didn't I, find no, that. I, I like I th- I think it's pitch I think it's actually pitched quite well and it's not just sort of like endlessly, oh my god, it's Iron yeah. Man, you know, Tony Stark, Iron Man, I'm such a fan, you know. It does change and she becomes like more integral to it. Okay. I also think because she's not in the films, she's like she doesn't come with any of those sort of preconceptions of 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 what the characters are like in the film. So actually yes. she 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 feels quite definitive, which feels like a very good idea to put her front and center. Because otherwise, you're there the whole time going, eh, it's not quite the Hulk from the film. Um, but her, you can't really say that. Like she actually feels like she would fit into that universe quite well. Um, I think mm. each character is really well represented in terms of like how they handle and they control, like they've built them all individually. It's not just a generic, you know, one kind of, you know, one control uh, scheme fits yeah. all. Yeah. Like there's bespoke stuff to like Iron Man's flight and the Hulk is just this crazy, you know, chaos thing. And her kind of elastic arms are, have got a very different like rhythm to the Hulk's kind of smashing. And I, I, uh, I'm like, so, so it isn't even like that different classes of superhero that like say, Thor's flying and Iron Man, Man's flying. Yeah, there field. are. There's definitely cro- there's definitely crossovers, but then there's 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 yeah. generally like a gimmick or two to each of them that feels quite bespoke and gives them their own kind of vibe. You know, whether it's the simple simplicity of like throwing Thor's hammer and then having to call it back, sort of God mm-hmm. of War style, where Iron Man's got this like energy balance where you know you have to get up and close to sort of charge up other things. Um, yeah, I like considering this. I thought this game was going to be a real mess. I think there's a lot of really nice stuff there, particularly in the campaign. I'd love to have seen a, a version of this where it was just a single or a story driven game, maybe with those co op mashups that you could maybe enjoy a few moments or whatever with AI like a, or a, a sort of a Gears of War type of yeah, scenario. It's, but throwing in all it's it's when you begin to do all the loot, you know, I haven't got to the end game, so I can't really speak to that, but. The loot is just, it's just miserable. It's just a num- a meaningless number. Like, there's no reason to engage with that system in the campaign anyway with beyond just equip best stuff, you know? Um, there, there, yeah, there, there isn't because, uh, like, even I you know, uh, uh, we chatted about it when we were talking about the beta. It, it is, it, it's not cosmetic based. It is just, like, equip whatever the best number is. So there's... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 and it, it's got weird shit like like we've said before you equip different rib cages for the hulk which is <laughs> terrific yeah <laughs> bad and you know stuff like, stuff like that's yeah. weird um but it's i don't know like there's there's levels where you think if this was just a single player you could campaign you could have like grown this idea out um this one we're watching at the moment is like starts with tony stark has to basically build like a temporary iron man suit around his house as he's fighting yeah. off guards that's a great concept for like, you know, a great bit of tutorializing, you know, because he only has an arm blaster, so he's shooting and then he has the arm blaster in the feet and next thing you know, he's got all the gubbins. Um, you know, Crystal Dynamics, they're a single player, they, you know, they've made great single player games and it's its definitely, uh, it feels like that that's where it's at its strongest is when it's playing to their traditional strengths. Um, like, do, do, does, apart from the loose... Do you are you ever um, or do you ever find the non-linear single-player aspects intrusive? If if you know what I mean, like like because uh, because I I know you're saying just the campaign and the story and the character and 
uh, the combat and like you're, you're kind of talking quite positively about all those aspects but obviously it's the the loot and all that that isn't and the kind of games of serviceiness of it that you're not as hot on but can you yeah. can you ignore it can you well that is but that is what the fun you know once you're done with the campaign because th- there's not a lot to the campaign levels and I really get the fit, you know, once you're done with them, you, you they're not like interesting enough that you'd want to redo them. You know, there's no yeah. like, it, it's a very linear, bro- you know, the campaign levels really are just an excuse to like introduce you to each of the characters in succession and, you know, warm up their, it unlocks their like core abilities along with certain story beats. Um, like the thrust of the game, the meat of the game, the tens and tens or hopefully hundreds of hours that they want you to play, I guess, is <laughs> is uh, like these sort of open world maps, which are quite like the Destiny kind of hubs where you sort of, you know, there'll be sort of slightly bespoke missions built from like generic mission parts. Go here, protect this thing, then go here and protect that thing. You know, this stuff here, which is just go into a factory and smash up some generators. There's a lot of go to a place and defend it or go to a place and break five things. And even though it's livened up by the interesting combination of heroes, it's pretty, it's pretty weak source as far as like mm. actual missions go. Um, do you like, so uh, do, do you at least see yourself, you know, Playing it through to the end of the story, and then maybe. Oh yeah, abso- yeah, absolutely. And you know, if if other if I've got friends who are playing it, I might I give it a go, and you know, I'll definitely give the the, the longer term game a, a proper go because I like mm. the characters, I like how they feel. I actually think you know, the amazing thing about Marvel, and again, we have said this before, is that there aren't loads of good Marvel games. You know, there is no Batman Arkham Asylum for Marvel characters. Yeah. Um, Spider Man aside, but that doesn't. That's not you know. That's not really Avengers, is it? Um, and well, not pretty, you know, in the in in the, in like the film sense. Yeah. Um, and individually, I actually think the heroes here are like good enough that they could have been like at the heart of their own games. Like the Iron Man is a great video game Iron Man. It doesn't and, feel like um, what's his name, Nolan North, doing an impression of Robert Downey Jr. Well, not that, like no, but, uh, no, but like just mechanically, he's oh, right. to, okay, control, yeah, yeah. to control him. He controls like a good Iron Man. The Hulk controls like a good Hulk. Uh, you know, they they each respectively could be the star of their own game. Like that's what's kind of mad about it. Like that feels like quite a hard thing to get right and to get that right, but to somehow embed them in this quite boring structure. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot. If it was like a lot of smart people just went in a bit of a weird direction with this one, but but all in all, you know, in conclusion, it does sound like I, I pretty positive. I, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't hate it. I my much of my positivity. <laughs> Stick that on the box. Much of my positivity is more of a reaction to like I really thought this was going to be yeah. dire and have absolutely nothing for me, and actually, I, I quite like it. Also. Like it's got some frame issue, frame rate issues on PC, definitely, but it's pretty shiny. And when when there's loads of people doing mad shit at the same time, it's it's pretty exciting to look that at. Is, that's so. good to hear. That is, that is good to hear. Um, so Matthew, I have spent the last seven days, or at least the last couple of days, revisiting my childhood. I've been well, childhood, my teenage years. I feel. Or whatever, whatever age I was, basically, uh, when I was skateboarding around, watching the Extreme Sports Channel, Matthew, watching the X Games and playing all the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater video games. Uh, this weekend, I've done that again with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Uh, this is the remake of, oh, yeah, you guessed it, the first two Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games uh, coming in one lovely little package uh, all shiny and nice for 2020. And I, I'm I'm overjoyed, Matthew. It's terrific. Like, I, d- I don't know if you remember the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD from, was that 2015? Uh, it was a Robomodo game. And then we had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. That was from 2015. Uh, and both were... Uh, Five both was rank. Yeah, a five, five was five was terrible. Um, just like yeah, uh, the, I suppose. Uh, and the the Tony Hawk license had been just destroyed in recent years, thanks to 
you know, loads of things like ride, American wasteland, all that. Um, so all signs pointed to this being kind of, you know, pretty similar or at best a nice nostalgia sort of, oh yeah, remember that? That was great. But this is, oh, it plays so well. It plays uh, the mark of a true, uh, of a great remake. It plays as well as you think you remember the original play. Oh, okay, yeah. But what they've done here is they have, yeah, remade the first two games, but with the controls from the later games. So, you know, they've added manualing, they've added... Oh, uh, uh, okay. They've added reverts. Um, they've added uh, um, wall planting. So, you know, you kind of like bounce off the wall. And that, that is the thing that Tony Hawk had. And I suppose why I favoured Tony Hawk over, say, the Skate series. Because, yeah, Skate is, you know, if you want a, a skateboarding simulation game, for lack of a better term, then that's where you go because that's going to give you an authentic experience. Whereas here, you're going to get the massive uh, combos. You're going to get, like, really outlandish stuff. Uh, but that's mm. that's kind of what I loved about the original games. Um, are you, no, are you, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to gauge this from looking at your footage. Are you good at Tony Hawk's? No. Um, right, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not. Like, I don't think I'm terrible, but at the same time, I'm not. Uh, like, like, and I, you know, I, I know that because there's an online multiplayer in this, and... Yeah. <laughs> I was shit. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a, a play, a revolving playlist type thing where they will just throw modes at you and a number of other people, like graffiti, which is you must tag uh, uh, tag objects or in the environment by doing tricks on them. And I was just awful. There's like who can get the highest combo within a, a certain amount of time. It's really difficult. Some people are yeah. very good at this, this game already. And I definitely had that moment where I was like, I remember being decent at this, but not anymore. Um, I was, but, I was yeah. actually, I, I think I was pretty good at Pro Skater 4, as yeah. unlikely as I may not seem a skatery <laughs> person. I mean, I've never, it's, I, I've never loved a game that I've, more that I have than I and I haven't understood like the culture in it at all. Like I am, I am so not who this game is aimed at. Like I'm the person who, I, like I'll turn the music off because I don't like it. Because <laughs> it's all really? people like oi 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 oi, and I'm like, no, nah, that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. I'll, I'll turn it off and listen to This American Life, the podcast. <laughs> instead because, because that that that's an important factor in this all right fair enough it might be to your taste but again but you know the, like mechanically i love it i love it i think like, you know i love the, the the score chasing and and how much you can squeeze out of these levels i i you know this was pro skater 4 that's the one i played but 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 yeah. especially with the 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 later um like like the manualing the reverting all that um like you can squeeze oh, even manuals, more I more out manuals, of this. They were added later, right? They were t t was it three? They were definitely in four, and I because I remember I loved Mac. That is like such a combo mm. driver. Just, just, just chain, doing... chains it all together, yeah. Like oh. re reverts was three, I think. Ah, uh, look, let's <laughs> we edit this out in post because I can't say for definite. Um, but uh, like I know the music may have not been to your taste, Matthew, but I know I and you know a generation of teenagers angsty teenagers uh discovered numerous bands be it goldfinger be it in my case bad <laughs> bad religion um but like all that like some some of those like classic songs like superman I'm like, like turn it you. down i'm like, turn it down <laughs> like, everyone to well with the one with a hectic trumpet in which tricks you into thinking you might like it because it's got a bit of trumpet in it and then you're like oh no it still isn't for me it's, it's going double the drummer's going double time i don't like this at all but like it, it is um it has cleverly the soundtrack has some of the songs that you remember and you enjoy but it also has a number of new tracks as well that feel at home within the soundtrack you know like so is some of them are thing? new some of them are old what's that is that is, is that still a thing like is skater-esque music still being made. made and really it's not just from a certain era uh, i would say it's still being made but it's not as popular right okay but then you know yeah like because like, you could say that about any like it's not like 
you know, g- general hard rock and roll is topping the charts these days. But it's so, uh, but like they haven't they haven't just put in they haven't like mis- misjudged it and just shoved in no know, what like, like perceive, it, what they perceive to be popular modern music. Yeah, no, they they they've really they they've really nailed the soundtrack. Like from uh yeah, your kind of pop punk to your kind of more angsty sort of uh yeah, harder rock kind of metal inspired type of stuff. Uh right. it's just really good. Like it, this feels like this is Vicarious Visions who made um what's it called? We had it on Mystery Steam Reviews last week. Uh Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. And that got a lot of love as well for how they uh, you know, it had some detractors as well, I suppose, but it, it got a lot of love from longtime fans. And this, rightfully so, is similar. It does, it feels weird that Activision's success, apart from Call of Duty now, its largest success is from remakes, but it is, it's working. And like, this does something I mean, that... Cr- just send a message, isn't it? If all anyone's yeah. buying from you is Our old your games. games from 15 years ago, maybe like your new games... Need to... Yeah, you need to have a look at things a little bit. But one thing that this does over Crash Bandicoot is this ties the two games apart from, in, in apart together. From not having Crash Bandicoot. Apart from, yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, a huge plus. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it ties the two games together. So if you upgrade your skater in uh, the first game, it carries over to the second game. All of your, all of your stats, all that, they aren't two completely separate entities, you know? Oh, okay. Um, but what they have added are things like challenges. So, uh, like on particular maps, you know, uh, it will be whatever it is, uh, you know, do a particular move over this particular gap and you'll get XP for that, which then you can buy T-shirts, hats, boards, whatever you want. Mm. It's all like kind of cosmetic stuff, but it's nice if you want to waste away tens upon tens of hours, which... Oh, I th- I, I think I will. I think I will. It 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 is. It's a faithful remake, but at the same time, it is. It just plays so fluidly, and again, with all those improvements from the later games, it just feels. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's terrific! It's terrific. All, all the games that get remade, they're never good. They're all they're things that you liked, but they're never. This is actually good. Like Tony Hawk, they they are good games. Like mechanically, they are great. So. Yeah. It's yeah, just, just, really just lo- loads and loads of fun. Uh, but that isn't the only remake we're discussing this week. No, 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 no. A game that is from neither of our childhoods, however, is uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Definitely yeah. a better name than Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2. Re-Reckoning. Yeah. Big fan of that. But uh, yeah, Matthew Castle, you haven't played a ton of this, but you have played... A little yeah, so I played, I played this. I played this back in the day. I reviewed it. Um, oh, I think I reviewed it for Edge. I think is that right? So, yeah, I think I gave it a six in Edge. Oh, an Edge six. So that would be like an eight or so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a seven. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, a much beloved by some people like I've, i know i just I, I happen to know a couple of people who are really really into this game which i think maybe has over exaggerated how popular it is <laughs> like, I, I know how people do like this game but you know wait, when you know a couple of people who like something they can kind of skew that can't they um it definitely because i i did when this was announced i did see and oh thank god finally blah blah and i was like who the fuck are these people? Like, yeah. uh, it's, I, I felt like that this came and went. And the most interesting thing about this game originally was the story of its development and how just mental that was. But yeah, you, you, so in your head coming into this, were you like, this is loved by, by many? Yeah, it's, uh, well, I, I can sort of understand why it's, it's like a RPG with it, with a, uh, a very distinct feel to it in that I've always thought it is like an arcade RPG in that it has the the scale and the kind of chewiness of you know a big traditional I want to say I don't want to say Elder Scrolls but that's the only thing that's popping into my head in terms of like you know the, the lore and whatnot mm-hmm. um, but it's got the kind of uh, structure and immediacy of something like Fable which is obviously a much more kind of compact RPG. So it sort of sits somewhere between them 
it's either like a massive humorless fable or a really streamlined uh kind of punchy elder scrolls it, 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 so uh, in a good in a good way, like not not stripped back, as you say, streamlined. Like streamlined. So like uh, like Fable Two, it's got a control system where um, different weapons are like mapped to different face buttons. So it's quite punchy in terms of just sort of hammering them. Uh, you can basically recalibrate your heroes really really easily by just shoving different weapons in there. They feel they immediately feel very different. Combat is very much about time dodges it doesn't feel like a game that's massively hampered by stats you know it, it feels more like a hack and slasher to actually play it um so it's kind of got that but immediacy but then it also has kind of lock picking and stealth and persuasion so it has all those skills and you can build character builds around those um but the world itself is quite sort of simple it doesn't feel like you're a very complex character in a complex world it feels like you are a kind of a collection of skills in quite a st- sort of streamlined linear world. Like, okay. it's it, the world's split into like areas that you load between. It's not a big open world, for example. Um, you know, when you enter things, it sort of cuts between them. It feels like you can very much kill everything in an area and sort of be done. You can exhaust it, you know, you can kind of tick things off and the world is sort of, finished in a way not in a ubisofty map kind of way but <laughs> yeah it's neither is it like an elder scrolls where you're really like wow i'm really immersed in this place it feels very artificial i guess okay. um uh but <laughs> uh but like playing it like i remember what you know instantly what i liked about it in in, in that it is like that slightly kind of arcadey take on the rpg you know there isn't books with thousands of pages of tedious mm, lore you have mm. to, to read through it kind of gets on with it i mean i really like fable 2 because it's an even more extreme version of that you know it's very very streamlined it's very very quick you know it just kind of gets to the point and that's just personal taste um but this is massive i mean this all like i think i'll take it at about 40 50 hours i think when i played it originally but this there's loads of other because this has got all the dlc and everything um right right as, uh, how, how how does it look in person? Because looking uh, like looking back at the footage doesn't look wonderful. I understand this is a remaster, isn't it? It's not a it's not a remake. Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not. Re- it's not a remake. It's yeah. a re reckoning. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think they've done some like improved texture work. I mean, you can play it like 4K on PC. It's one of these things which probably feels more relevant to console people who don't own the original or you know, right. struggle to get access to it. Though weirdly, I think it is backwards compatible on Xbox. So if you did have the 360 game, I don't know that you'd need to like. You know, you shouldn't rebuy it. Um, on PC, like, because I played it on Xbox back in the day, like, uh, I, I haven't played it on the original on PC, so I can't necessarily speak to the difference of it. But it's one of those remasters where everything looks really sharp, and so it just reveals the kind of age of the world. You know, yeah, a bit like when you yeah. emulate a, like an old N64 game and then you see it and it all looks a bit like, uh, sharp edges. Like the trees are very sharp. Um, everything feels very chunky, very kind of clean cut in that sort of, well, slightly uh, 2010 kind of way, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's not, uh, it isn't a luxury remake by any means. I guess it's quite similar to um, some of the other THQ Nordic kind of remasters like your Dark Siders one, uh, Dark Siders two. But I think they've done them all, uh, haven't they? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, they did. They did the first, yeah, De- Definitive, Definitive Edition, Edition was the same. And, and uh, they did the Red Faction Guerrilla, the yes. remastered, and um, uh, yeah. So it's 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 like nice. It's sharp. It's it's very clean, but it doesn't look like it, it looks like a thing of its time. You know, it looks like how you probably remember it looking on on PC. I mean, even though it is doing resolutions, the original game didn't. And from my time with it, it was all pretty smooth. A few little visual glitches here and there, but nothing too serious. 
Um, mm. But I, you know, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, if you own it already, I don't necessarily see the need to to buy it again. Um, like there's nothing new in it. There's a oh, sort of a weird expansion coming next year that is new, which I think. I don't know if you can buy it as a standalone. Like, it's a bit confusing, some of the... What? The... I totally missed this. Really? No. Yeah, there's a like thing see. happening. Yeah, I thought it was just, like, old DLC, but it's not. It's, an, like, they're making a new chunk of it, a new bit of it. Okay. Sure, so. then, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, so, know, like... Was, this, is, this is only a 1440p capture, but this was playing at 4K quite happily. It's not... It's not it didn't feel massively intensive. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have any problems getting it to run and look decent. It just doesn't... It just looks a bit old. <laughs> but but did, you, did you find that your 6 out of 10 from 10 years ago still stood, more or less? It's more just because it's... It's streamlined. Like, you know, it's all right. It, 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 there's a lot of repetition in it. Like I, I, I felt like it was streamlined in 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 weird ways. Like the, you know, every fight just sort of felt the same. Even just playing it for a couple of hours, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this 100. percent Like this is exactly how I felt after playing 40 hours of the thing. Um, you know, it's and it's quite it's quite. Um, I don't know. Tonally, it's. Not quite to my taste. It's a bit naff, you know. It's very kind of. <laughs> you were you telling know. me before, the <laughs> before that was the real pre-show. Lots of voiceovers like this. Yes, I'm a gnome, and you're like, yeah, I'm sure you are. That, that doesn't uh, sound annoying at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just I don't know. It's it's kind of. If you loved it back back then, you know, you've probably still got it. And still got happy memories of it. Um, so just like, play play the old version, is it? Yeah, or buy like a super buy this when it's like a fiver, and you'll get quite a big game for a fiver. But I don't yeah. know. It's it's like I tell you what it is. It's a bit. It's a seven out of ten game. Even though I gave it a six, it's a seven. It's one of those seven out of tens. You know that the people who love it, they absolutely love it. It's like a great. You know, it's a great weird seven. But if mm -hmm. you're not into it, you're like. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's kind of where where I'm at. Okay, okay. You know what I um, mean about the stuff. I know it I, makes I, sense. I, 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 sort of, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, fucking hell. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, so you can if you want, you can go back and read Matthew's six out of ten review. Of oh, Kingdoms of Abra. Can, <laughs> can you not? Anymore. Oh, it doesn't exist online. Oh, that is a shame. Um, but yeah, somebody asked in the chat about Edge. It, it, Edge used to be a great. Edge is still a great magazine. Oh, I love so, Edge um, magazine. So yeah, um, you should. Uh, <laughs> I do not read that if you want. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that is enough, and that is what we have been playing over the last week. So now, Matthew Castle, it is time to test the knowledge of one another in a segment that we like to call Mystery Stream Reviews. Time for mystery steam reviews. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gabe. Uh, so, mystery steam reviews, if you don't know, is the part of the show where I, Colin Mahern, and Matthew Castle test the knowledge of one another by putting five mystery steam reviews to the other. Uh, we've, yeah, you have the text of the review. The, uh, the hours that they've played and all that, and the user, but um, the other person must guess what the game is. You, each of us has three lifelines. Yeah, uh, after much discussion about the lifelines last week, we have we have tinkered with them somewhat. So the lifelines are, when he's, lo when he's looking for me. Fuck these lifelines, man. Uh, so one of them is a question where you get to, if, if you're answering the mystery steam review you get to ask a question about the game but you can't ask is the game this you know uh you can ask for a clue the clue can be cryptic but it can't be unfair and you can <laughs> what it, what last week was pause because i should say it, there are two minute intervals as well you get two minutes to to guess the game uh but yeah the third lifeline is a genre so the way you get to ask for the genre and the question asker must 
automatically reveal the genre. Are you all right, Matthew Castle? You're yeah. I I, I just want to say so. I, I've seen a lot of comments with people like Matthew's like super aggressive in mystery theme reviews. Like <laughs> I'd say it's passion. Like I'm desperate. I'm desperate to win. Of course, like, I really want to win. Like I'm behind three two, but the castle comeback is on. Um, like. I, I, I'm going to be more sport. I don't want people th- accusing me of bad sports and shit. So, like, <laughs> I'm going to this week, I'm going to be a lot more positive because I am a happy go lucky guy and I don't want this tainting my reputation. <laughs> it's all, it is all in good fun. It is all in good. We're just, we're, we're competitive. The two of us, we, we just kind of, you know, we get a bit competitive. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, we get competitive and then everyone in the comments is like, Matthew is such a prick. <laughs> Well, they you know, like uh, Cullum is. They're uh, like he's I, so chill, but I, he's got the ch- he's got the chill smugness of a man in the lead. That's the difference. I mean, this is true. After today, I might get. You know, I'm a very bad loser, so uh, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So yeah, let's start also, off. Make sure you're not looking at cheat. Uh, make sure you're not looking at the chat. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not looking. At, I, I swear, I swear, Scouts Honor, not looking at the chat. I'm, I'm uh, popping out and I'm minimising it. Um, yeah, I'm going to push my chat over here to the left and I'm not able to see. Uh, so, Matthew Castle, here is your first mystery steam review from me. And when I finish speaking, you have two minutes. So, are you ready? Oh, I was born ready. Let's do it. Uh, so, for masochists who hate themselves and derive pleasure from torture, the art is cool, though. And that's from Cute to Tori. It's recommended... And they had 1.4 hours on record and 1.4 hours at review time. Your time starts now. Say it again. For masochists who hate themselves four. and derive... Four as in F-O-U-R, F-O-R, the number. F-O-R, 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 oh, four. 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 There are four masochists. Yeah. Right. yeah, who hate themselves and derive pleasure from torture. The art is cool, though. So... It's 2017. Yes, they're all games from 2017. I should have said that 15. at the start. Sorry, yeah. Uh, One, 130 left. Okay, 130. Masochists. So, the art is cool. Was that, no, it's not Dark Souls 3. That was a little. That was a couple of years before. Um, the art is cool. <laughs> the art is... Or maybe Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight's 2017. Masochists who hate themselves and derive pleasure from torture. Because it is hard. I suck at that game. One minute remaining. The art is cool. 2017. What happened in 2017? <sighs> what happened? What happened? This game came out. That's one thing that happened. Um, the art is cool. But it's yeah. hard. It's a hard game. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard game. It's a hard game. I, I think Hollow Knight's hard, but do other people think it's hard? Rose. That isn't a question. That isn't 30, my question. 30, 30 seconds remaining. If you're if you're going to use your, li- your lifelines, you'd want no, to no, use no, them. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use my. Okay. Li- no. Okay. No. It's um. Fifteen seconds. Cuphead. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Cuphead. Beautiful S- art. Rough as shit. <laughs> seven, with seven seconds left on the clock. So yeah, didn't even yeah. need to use the all, all his time. Matthew Castle. Yeah. A hard game with cool art. You said Cuphead. Yeah. And I can tell you that Cuphead is correct. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Look, look. I, sh- I should say I have been looking at a lot of 2017 games today for this segment. So I, I, I have as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm, I, I hope I have. I hope I've got them all in, in my head. So Matthew Castle, score currently 1-0. Didn't have to use a lifeline. Please do give me uh, my first Mystery Steam review, please. I wanted to buy DMC5, but right now I can't afford it. So here I'm reviewing the cheaper alternative for it. Hmm. Time starts now. Time starts now. Recommended point... And is that point nine hours on record? Yes. Why did they only play it for... 
hang on. I wanted to buy Devil May Cry 5, but I can't afford it. So here I'm reviewing the cheaper alternative. So it is a budget version. Well, maybe not bu- like budget, but like uh, maybe an indie action game that, yeah, new would have cost 20 or so. Or a remaster. We're talking a lot about remasters and remakes. Um, oh, an action game that came out in 2017. Oh, oh. Oh, I think I have this. And purely, I've one minute and nine seconds left. I think I have this purely because, purely because of looking for Steam reviews for this, that I saw this game. I think this is Bayonetta. Because Bayonetta would have surely been cheap enough when it came out, when it came to Steam in 2017. It surely wasn't released uh, uh, full price because it would have been an old game at that stage. So I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to stop it there at 35 seconds. Final answer, Bayonetta. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer, Chris. You, uh, yeah, it's right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's fucking right. (laughs) I mean, I mean, mean, congrats. I'm fair. What a what a healthy start to this competition. <laughs> it's such a shit. Uh, so, Matthew, here is your second mystery Steam review. Okay, okay. Purgatory Space Jam. That's all I'm going to say. And that's from Shalandir. It's recommended with 64 hours on record and 64 hours at review time. And your time starts now oh my god oh my god purgatory space jam yes purgatory space jam correct remember so, you ha- you have your lifelines if you want to use them uh this has already really thrown me i'm thinking like i'm thinking literal basketball in purgatory purgatory space jam a rabbit playing basketball in purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> a rabbit playing basketball. Bugs right. rabbit. Mm-hmm. Give me the genre. Um, uh, the genre is RPG sports. Or sports RPG. Sports RPG is not a thing? That's why I made a little noise at the start, because it's... Sports RPG? Oh my god, I've never even heard of a sports hub. I don't, I, like... This, this could just be a game I've not heard of, right? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, do, I, I don't pick games that are from itch. Like, I, I, like this, this is a, a known game. This is a known game? That you play sports in hell? In purgatory? Because it's difficult to nail down, I will tell you that, like, sports RPG, um, kind of, yeah, like, dialogue, you have you've conversations with people as well. I, I kind of just, yeah, you have 20 seconds. Oh, I have no fucking idea what this is. I, I'm still happy to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just don't know what it is. So please inform me. It sounds great. Okay, are you sure? Five seconds? Do you yeah, want to take yeah, a shot? Yeah, I love okay. this. is so good. I love this okay. game, and I'd love right. to find out what this interesting sports RPG is. Well, uh, to go through the official channels, Matthew, I can say that you were incorrect. Yeah, well, I, I, I technically wasn't, because I didn't... I keep, smiling, an keep smiling, keep smiling, keep <laughs> smiling. Uh, I can tell you... You can't be wrong if you don't venture an answer. Uh, I can tell you that um, the correct answer is Pyre. Never even fucking heard of that. Okay, okay. Uh, it's uh, I. don't think that's terribly unfair. I. I think that that is a video game that people know. It's an excellent video game. It's from Super how Giant. Not, how do I not know that? I haven't. It's, I have. How did that pass me by? What is, it's I'm it's it's, re- it's really it's really good. It's from Super Giant who did Bastion and Transistor. Uh, what the fuck? Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
a, a super giant game. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> uh, right, Matthew, give me my second mystery Steam review, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this is so good. I love this game. Alright, second review. Love it. It's like GTA 5 and Far Cry had intense, angry sex. Recommended. 24.9 hours on record. 12.2 hours at, preview, at review time. Time starts now. Um, it's like GTA 5 and Far Cry had intense, angry sex. So that... Uh, like, cause that's that's how you gotta play mystery steam reviews. You gotta think about all the words being used here. So, it's like GTA and Far Cry. F GTA, yeah, it was GTA and Far Cry Five. And if you wanna focus on the gameplay aspect of those games, you know, bombast emergent gameplay, but it's intense emergent gameplay. It is. Uh, <laughs> I'm stalling because I can't think of anything. Um, yeah, GTA awesome, Five, awesome sex. <laughs> 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 Remember um, that famous I do. Alex I do. Um, do I use a lifeline? What do I have? A clue? A question? A genre? Um, I, I'm not going to ask for a genre because it's gone. Oh, hang on. 2017. Was this 2017? I don't know. You'd have to answer. I. Just Cause 4, yeah, it was 4, it popped into my head. I think that was December 2017. I have, or was it 2018? No, that was, tw ah. Was that 2018? Go with your heart. Go with your heart. <laughs> Go with your heart, not your brain. I think, I can't get Just Cause on my head now. Um... Uh, we could sit here and waffle for another 20 seconds, but I think I'm going to say final answer. Uh, I'm not totally confident, but I'm going to say just cause four. Final answer, Chris. That's your final answer. That is my final answer, Chris. So we're looking for a game that combines the open world thrills of GTA 5 and the jungle setting of Far Cry. And the correct answer is Tom Glancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Shit. I'm so sorry. Just Cause was 2018, wasn't it? Have you heard of that one? <laughs> have you heard of that one? Or was that, un was that unfair of me? Right, Matthew, here is your third mystery Steam review. I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh... I can't even trust my own toilet paper anymore. And that's from Trothus. It's recommended with 28.1 hours on record, 21.6 hours at review time. And your time starts now. I Colm. can't even trust my own toilet paper anymore. Colm, I've got some bad news for you. you I may have looked at this game and... I may have seen that this is a bit of a meme for these reviews, is I can't trust X anymore. Now, you've picked toilet paper, which was wise, because a lot of them, I believe, say I can't trust mugs, I can't trust chairs. I think you've really stumbled into, <laughs> stumbled into something here. I'm afraid it's prey. <sighs> which is weirdly an anagram of pyre. <laughs> Well, if you're going to ask for, or yeah, if you're going to ask for the clue, I was going to say something about an anagram. Um, is that your final answer, Matthew? Yes, it is. <laughs> I love, I love the sound clip of the cheering. I can tell you that the correct answer is indeed pray. Ah, uh, listen. Anyone could win it. What, what, uh, the score is 2-1? 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two, two, one. One. Two, one, yeah. All right, Matthew, uh, give me my third Mystery Steam review, please. Right. I regret having bought this and the three hours it took me to finish it, 
The events portrayed are horrible, though it's not in the horror genre, and I don't feel in any way better <laughs> for having played it. Not recommended. <laughs> Three hours of record. <laughs> <laughs> Time starts now. Uh, I regret having bought this and the three hours it took me to finish it. So three hours. Uh, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Uh, the events portrayed are horrible, but not in the horror genre. And I don't feel in any way better for having played it. I don't feel better for having played it. So that implies <laughs> that implies that you should feel better. Because they are, uh, so other Steam reviews or other critics or whatever are saying, I played this game and God, it was a fucking life affirming experience. But this person didn't have that experience and they played it for three hours. They didn't like it. Um, uh, what was it? It was horrible, but not in a horror game way. Yeah. Um, so you've what's still got your clues, remember? You've got all your clues. What's horrible, but not in a horror genre way? Uh, uh, what do I have? Genre, clue, and question. Um, can I have the genre, please? Come on. <laughs> narrative slash... Oh, it's a narrative game. And it has a story, a narrative, <laughs> <laughs> like <sighs> it's me- it's a it's a walking sim. All right, thank you. Jeez, <laughs> like drawing blood from a stone. Uh, twenty seconds. Shit. Uh, walking simulator that came out in twenty seventeen. Oh dear. Um. Oh shit. Fifteen. Uh, walking simulator twenty seventeen. Uh. Uh. I've ten seconds. Got it. Um. Uh. Uh, not the vanishing. Uh, what remains of Edith Lynch? With four seconds, final answer. Boom. That's your final answer. What remains of Edith Finch? It's the correct answer. Yes. Get in. Ex- expert use of of genre there, I thought. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I was like not in a horror way and I couldn't think of anything. Uh, what remains of Edith Lynch? A I think narrative, dr- narrative is a genre. <laughs> All right, Matthew, here is your fourth mystery Steam review. Okay. Uh, slow movement plus clunky interactions plus boring story. Maybe I missed the point, but all I got out of it was an obituary for a bunch of people that I don't care about. And that's from RBD Jellyfish. It's not recommended. And RBD Jellyfish has 1.7 hours on record and 1.7 at review time. And your time starts now. Oh, Jesus Christ. So slow Uh, movement, clunky interactions, boring story. Maybe I missed the point, but all I got out of it was an obituary for a bunch of people that I don't care about. I mean, that's also what remains of Edith Finch. But there's no way you wouldn't have got it if you'd picked that one already. Unless you're playing incredible mind games with me. Like, to be like, oh, 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 what is it? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what remains of Edith Finch? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like bullshit absolute fucking bullshit why am I like Frank Spencer like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh wait I think I've got him in seconds go uh, uh, you have one minute and ten seconds speaking of how long to go um fuck <laughs> yeah absolutely fuck it give me a clue uh, give you a clue right okay two seconds because I have my clues written down uh, your clue is uh, dangerous bath time oh that has to be Edith Finch because a baby drowns in a bar spoilers <laughs> um, <laughs> but that that is amazing if that is you've done that's amazing act of not knowing that game's name in the last... 30, I feel 30 like, seconds. Oh my god. You've played the ultimate mind game. You were like, oh, it's, uh, it's the vanishing of, uh, oh, it's like that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Again, Frank Spencer. Uh, 15 seconds. What remains of Edith Finch? 
Is that your final answer? Yeah. It has to be dangerous bath time. Are you sure? Two seconds? Yes. Okay. Matthew Castle. Oh, you, you, come on. I can I can tell you that the correct answer is what remains of Edith Finch. Wait. Well done. Is that three for three? Uh, it is, I think. Shit, we should really be keeping score. Uh, I think that is, that is three. Let me just check the ones that you, you, yeah, yeah. you got them all, didn't you? Yeah. No, I didn't get Pyre. Oh, sorry. You didn't get Pyre, so. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. Three, three, two, but I've had four and you've had three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's three, two currently. Yes. Yeah. Um, well oh, done. Boy. I try. I tried, I, I, that was, I, I mean, what, whatever you did, that that answer in the last one, that was... Thank you. Because I, I, I knew, I knew within, like, re, I was like, this is what remains of the Finch, clearly. But I'm going to try, I'm going to try something here. And uh, it didn't pan out, but, you know, you live and, you, was, you, live and you learn. That was so... Oh, oh, I think it's... Oh. The vanishing of oh, oh, Betty. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Right, <laughs> give me... Well, I just don't want to do a faux Irish and not offend anyone. <laughs> Give me, uh, give me my fourth mystery steam review, Matthew, please. This is like weirdly like one of your clues. Ten mm. out of ten, you can play basketball in space. Okay, time starts now. Four point five hours on record. Recommended. Oh, you've d shit. Have we played the exact same game? And tried to... Th you wouldn't throw it, though. You wouldn't sacrifice a point. I don't think you'd go that far. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. You... Oh, this is... This is... This is my maybe my favourite Mystery Steam reviews yet. There's really... This is high-level play, this. Uh, what is it? 10 out of 10, you can play basketball in space. I mean... I don't know. Wait, hang on. You don't play... It's not in space. Pyre doesn't happen in space. So let me think. Hold on. All right. Okay, I need to get Pyre out of my head. I have one minute and oh, seven seconds. You're... Um, Because I was going to say, Prey is in space, mm. but I, like, I reviewed Prey. Where do you... You don't play exactly. basketball. Exactly. Exactly. You don't, you don't play basketball in Prey. You don't play basketball and pray, so it can't be that. <laughs> uh, 40 seconds. Shit, 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 shit. Uh, oh, what clues you do I have? Got, you've got, yeah, you've, um, got, you've got to ask a question and a clue. Uh, would you be able to give me a clue very quickly? Uh, if we, we can pause the clock and I'll come up with a clue. Okay, thank you. I've paused at 27. Okay, so a clue for this game. Basketball in space. Um... When you, when you enter this location, everyone is missing. Okay, resume the clock. Um, when you enter this location, that doesn't help me at all. Um, shit, I've eighteen seconds. When you enter this location, everyone is missing. Where has everyone gone? What, what remains of Edith Finch? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be so bold. <laughs> Uh, uh, he, he pulled off the perfect double finch. Uh, two seconds. Uh, pray, pray. I can't think of anything else. I, I, I lost it. Is that your final answer? It has to be. The clocks ran down. Final answer. Pray. You've said pray. Oh shit! Go on. <laughs> pray was a game set in space where everyone was missing from the ship, but. It was Tacoma, where you played basketball oh! in space. Oh, I'm so sorry. Shit. I'm so sorry. I love the idea that I had I had Pyre, so I sacrificed Pyre. Like, I'm not on that level. <laughs> but like, oh my god. He's gone. That yeah, is uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I worked. Uh, I fucking worked myself up there. Um, right. Uh, so the score currently three two. So Matthew, 
Isn't it? I think it's three two. So if you get this, uh, you win. You win. And it's so real baby. Uh, so Matthew Castle, here is your fifth and final mystery I'm steam start my victory review. dance early. <laughs> uh, right. Best Call of Duty yet. Ten out of ten. And that's from Dying Spree. It's recommended with 6.6 hours on record, 1.5 hours at review time. Uh, time starts now. <laughs> You're a twat. That's what you did last time with Assassin's Creed. I don't know, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. The Call of Duty. The Call of Duty from that year was Call of Duty World War Two, I think. Um, but there's no way... You, you, you still have a question and a, and a clue. No, uh, you've given me a clue. You just oh, I have. Sorry. Up. Sorry. You still have a question. You still have a question. Oh. <laughs> you did this last week with Assassin's Creed, and it was Assassin's Creed, and I talked myself out of it. Was there a battlefield that year? I don't think there was. I think Battlefield One, Battlefield One, was 2016. Then it took a year, and then 2018 was the 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 the, the zany one with all the hook hands just, and all that. Stuff. Just under a minute. Oh God. Uh, if you want to ask a question, I, I'll pause the the timer. No, I, I, I'm uh, I'm not allowed to ask you game names, am I? So. Uh, ask a question. Ask a question. <laughs> um, what's this? A sequel? Do I, are you asking a question? Yeah, the question okay, is: What's pause. this a sequel? Was this a sequel? Uh, was this a sequel? This was a sequel. Yes, okay. it was. Uh, resuming the clock. Really told me much more than you know. It's not a weird standalone that I'm not thinking of. No. Oh my god! Twenty seconds. I, I, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna fuck me on this, but I'm gonna say, <laughs> Call of Duty, WW two. Is that your final answer? I think it is, and it either isn't that, or you're gonna screw me on the name because I can't quite remember what it is. But yeah, that's my final answer. So you said. I'll start my victory dance early. To the best Call of Duty, yes. You said. Call of Duty WW2, which makes sense. You know, that's not a not a, a terrible guess. Wait, and I, I was can, that the year I, they remade Modern Warfare? Oh, I, fucking I can tell be. you. <laughs> I that, better not be. I can tell you that Call of Duty WW2 is incorrect. Oh, my victory dogs retracted. The correct answer was Resident Evil Seven Biohazard. You, you freaking twat! That is what? How can I even possibly guess that? I see. I had great clue. Like clue. Uh, I was kind of hoping you were going to have your clue in your genre at that point, uh, but you didn't. Um, what was the clue? Uh, the clue. Let me see, because I, I did actually prepare clues to all these. Oh, it was just. Family Matters, which would you know got got you thinking about yeah. what, what does that mean? And then obviously the genre. If you asked me, I would have just said survival horror because that was what I was. I was kind of hoping that you were going to ask because you could still ask what genre or yeah, you can still ask what genre the game is even if you don't have that your is unbelievable horseshit. Unbelievable! Uh, like I don't care what they write off this video. That fucking stinks. It, 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 oh uh, no, that is a top level play. I can see the comments as a top level play. <laughs> Absolute. How is that top but level it, play? It, 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 it turns into a it turns into a first person shooter. That's what it. That's oh, what happens. anyone who thinks anyone who thinks Resident Evil Seven has got anything to do with Call of Duty or is anything like Call of Duty. Um, while you find the biggest. All right, all right. <laughs> I give you one shitter. I give you one. I think the rest of them are oh, fair. Right. Um, one shitter a week. While, while uh, or before we get on to my final mystery steam review, uh, burning questions will be coming up next. So do get your burning questions in the chat and then we'll get to them afterwards. But yes, Matthew, please give me my fifth and final mystery steam review. This is 
to uh, to right. make it three all. This one was this one was complicated, so I've got to explain this to you. You've got I'm to okay. I'm nice. still on the first boss. Then this is officially pro it says product refunded, so it had a product refund on it. I'm still on the first boss. Recommended. 389.9 <laughs> hours on record. <laughs> Oh, uh, time starts now. I'm still on the first boss. Product refunded. And you say that best Call of Duty ever is a shitter. Like, I'm still on the first boss. So, 389. Now, again, I could go, like, right, he's still on the first boss. It's a difficult game. Uh, and one of the earlier games discussed this evening was Cuphead, which is a, is a boss rush game. Um, I'm trying to think what's, Did any Souls game come out in 2017? I don't think it did What hard games came out in 2017 Where you could get stuck on the first boss Um, When did Oh hang on Was that 2017? Uh, we can no. still ask a question Oh shit! Yeah, I do. I still have a question. Uh, is it a question? Is that all I have? You've just got a question. Yeah, I've just got a question. Um, hold on, and just let me let me think of a question first. Um, I'm still on the first boss. Um, oh, I can't think of a good enough question to ask you. Um, let me see. Uh, I, it's a shit question, but I'm gonna. Pause the clock at 35 seconds and I'm going to say, is this game or has this game been discussed this evening? Is that, or, look, if you tell me that's not allowed, I, I will ask you a different question. Can, can, do you want me to change the question? If, is that the question you want to ask? No. Has this game been discussed during Mystery Steam reviews? Because I saw what you were doing. I know. I know what you were doing. That's and that's the question you want to ask. That's that's the question. Say it again. <laughs> has this game been is has this game been discussed during Mystery Steam reviews? Uh Yes. Right, I've restarted the clock, 32 seconds. Now, you're going to catch me for not saying tonight, aren't you? Um, I, uh, God, you need to be so careful during Mystery Steam reviews. 15 seconds left. Because I have it in my head and I can't think of anything else, 10 seconds, I am going to say... 5 seconds. I'm going to say Cuphead. I can't. I can't think of anything else, Chris. And I know. Yeah. Yeah. Did we yeah. just? That's your final answer. <laughs> Is that your final answer? <sighs> yes, my final answer. And would you say we discussed Cuphead? It's its name came up, you know. So I feel like it was part of the discussion. I think to say that it wasn't discussed would be quite unfair. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's the right answer. Yes! Yes! You got me on that. I even pressed the booing for a <laughs> sec. Oh, that is our first our first draw, I think. Three all. Oh. So I what mean, do you do? You want to just keep the score three two to me, or do we both get a point? What happens? What's the official? It's, it's, it's three two. Let's keep it three two. Keep it three two. We don't make it four three. All right. And I congratulate okay. you, sir, on your excellent choice of reviews. And I congratulate you on your excellent choice of reviews. Very sportsmanlike uh, this evening. Uh, so yeah. Please don't call me a prick in the comments. <laughs> Uh, so yeah that was a, a very enjoyable edition of Mystery Steam Reviews as ever and I hope that you dear viewer you've been getting your uh, getting your burning questions ready for us and popping them in the chat because yes indeed it is time as he lines it up 
it is time for burning questions. So this is the part of the show where we turn to you, the lovely viewers, and uh, answer whatever you want to ask us, your burning questions. Now, we have one from earlier before we get to the chat, uh, Matthew. Mm -hmm. And let me bring it up here quickly. Um, It was from Charlie Lapworth. And Charlie asked, I don't know if this defeats the whole purpose slash is too much effort, uh, but an audio only version of this show would be great. Uh, As we said last week, yes, that is the plan, Charlie. Um, Because of all the things happening at the minute, like uh, what's it called? PAX EGX and all that. uh, That won't be happening this week, nor maybe. Canning of me. And that too. Um, it, this, that won't be happening this week, nor next week, but possibly the week after. But yeah, that we will be turning this into a into a podcast. Um, now we turn to the live chat and see if anyone had any lovely questions for us. Uh, Benner twenty ten asks Toblerone or Ferrero Rocher. Matthew Castle. Well, well, what would you go for, or is it quite obvious? Ooh, uh, oh, he's, ooh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. I didn't see this one coming. They're both delicious European delights. Mm. Uh, probably Toberon. I like the ease of eating a Ferrero Rocher. Just pop it in. Uh, Toberon, nightmarish because it's a point. So it's like the most painful thing to eat. Mm-hmm. But uh, probably Toblerone for the flavour. I would say it's quite easy for me and I would say a Toblerone because I don't like nuts. Uh, and for that reason, for a Roche, I can get fucked. Um, Chris Wallace <laughs> asks, which Resident Evil game is your favourite Call of Duty? <laughs> Why? That would be, I mean, obviously, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. It goes without saying, does it not? Uh, Paul asks, I have one. Uh, what's the plan for, for the channel in the next few weeks? Um, so this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about the, uh, turning this into a podcast. Um, and as we've said about Matthew's role here as well, things are obvious. <laughs> uh, di- diplomatic. <laughs> uh, things things are up in the air a little bit. The one thing that will that you can guarantee is that the PC Gaming Week spot will be here on Monday evenings, unless it's Bank Holiday, then it will be Tuesday. Um, but yeah, because of all the things, like yeah, the PAX EGX as well is happening, so it's just been a little bit hectic, which I hope you'll understand and appreciate. Um, but yeah, regardless of all that, Peace Game Week spot, it is here. And this is where we will talk to you. Um, what's another question we have here? Spike Blythe asks, if you had to choose only one service, <laughs> Stadia or Uplay Plus? Yeah, go on, uh, I haven't heard. Go on. Stadia, because it's, it's getting bored at Baldur's Gate 3 and Uplay Plus isn't, so... That's that's very good. I forgot you play plus was even a thing to be honest. Uh, I may, may yeah. Let's go with Stadia because of the more about the potential that uh, that it has. Oh, that's my um, brother. My brother in the comments, Alexander Castle, saying on Sultina, which is a throwback to the Ferrero Rocher story I told you on the train cast. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? I do, I do indeed. Um, that's one for our subscribers, our members, even. Hmm. Uh, Rebel without a clue says uh, podcast only, or will there still be a video version? There will still be a video version. Yeah, the podcast only version will be for people who just want the podcast. Just, just so yeah, yeah you don't want to see my big red face. <laughs> um, uh, Iggy Pop Barker asks, "What's the worst game you completed?" Mine is Navy Seals on Game Boy, as I couldn't afford anything else. Uh, no one looked like Charlie Sheen. Uh, the worst oh game God. you completed, Matthew. If you can, if you can think of a a really bad game. Uh, 
that you were finished. Well, I don't know, I, so I, so I used to work on Nintendo, Max. So I used to get some absolutely rotten, <laughs> like ju- like during the like the Wii Gold Rush, where everyone was just making right. bad. Like there was a um, oh, uh, there was a game of um, the Ameri- on the DS. There was an Ameri- a game of the American version of Deal or No Deal. Oh, <laughs> Steel or No Deal. The subtle well, a, it's bullshit, but the psychology of it against just an a, it's literally you tap on fifteen briefcases and then the game says ten thousand dollars and that's it. That's, that's the, game. the game. And how much was yeah. how much was this retailing for? Like thirty dollars. Jesus. Yeah, uh, that was pretty that, bad. That is quite a lot. But uh, there was a lot of that stuff on Wii and DS. So I'm trying to think, like, what was uh. God, um, I mean, this isn't the worst game, so I don't know why I'm saying because I'm not answering your question, so it's very unfair. But like, uh, I remember when I finished Assassin's Creed Revelations, I was, I was, I was quite annoyed with myself because I was like, what a waste of time that was. Revelations is such a boring. That, that's the kind of uh, the most boring, disappointing game, but it's not the worst game. Um, uh, it's. But that's all that's coming to my head right now. Um, that's it. Deal or no deal on Assassin's Creed Revelation. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, NK asks if Matthew and Colm had to do a non video game podcast together, what would it be about? I don't know because we're quite quite different. This is a facade, all this, this banter. This is uh, no truth to this at all. I don't know. What, what, well, we what would we do? Other, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I uh, like you. Do you? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in That's that why it case, breaks my heart that you're so mean to me in Steam <laughs> reviews. In that case, I like you as well. I, I, I was just, I was being quite defensive there, just in case. Um, Rest- pro- like, I'd call it a thing where you explain wrestling to me. I'd, I'd that'd be all right. Yeah, that's what it probably would be. I would explain wrestling to Matthew, or we would do like a, a, a podcast on Japanese crime thrillers, and Matthew. Would explain those to me. Half it, every episode, half of it is wrestling, half That's... of it is Japanese crime thrillers. I wonder, could we come up with a name uh, for a, a, res- a wrestling Japanese crime thriller? Uh, mm. um, Answers in the chat, perhaps. S- uh, Smack Smackdown versus Law. Oh, oh, oh! Well, do- that deserves one of this. Well done. S- He's still got it. He has still got it. Um, Felice Landry asks, is Matthew the next James Bond? I think the, the there are many people in the world who are like, God, I hope not. <laughs> uh, uh, no. I, for starters, uh, while I pass my driving test, I'm terrified of driving. So that would just, I mean, make for very bad James Bond film. He's like, this car, it's got all this stuff in it. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, oh, I like this one from Robert. Matthew, how do you feel about starting a YouTube channel with a series where you review the quality of bread loaves in games? Uh, it's a bit hard to judge, isn't it really? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, with what's happening, <laughs> I'm open to any ideas right now. Uh, so it may be. Who knows? I would definitely subscribe to that. That would. Would uh, you Patreon it? It's hundred percent. Put me down as like top tier. What? What would your top? Would it be like one of those like a grand a month? Oh, that'd and be, you that'd get be to like I loaf you like loaf. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Uh, I loaf like, you. The, like the Churchill dog. Uh, right. So thank you very much for your burning questions. A pleasure as always. Um, so now it is time for the main event. Everything is set up. Uh, Matthew Castle, while I get this man on the phone, please do uh, let the let the viewer know what's happening. Who are we talking to? So we are, after many weeks of delay, interviewing the man, the legend, Sir Steven Spielberg. I don't, is he a sir? I don't think he is, no. Can you be American, sirs? Listen, if I met him, as I'm about to, I would call him sir. That's how I'll address him at the start of this interview. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, hello, sir. 
why didn't you pick up last week or the other four weeks? <laughs> uh, right, okay. So I think I've got it here. Here he uh, is. Get your comments ready. Yep. Let's uh, let's chat to uh, to Mr. Spielberg. Yes, and I, as we say every week, do he, he takes a while to answer, or at least he has done in the past. But yeah, do any burning questions you have for Mr. Spielberg? He wants to hear from his his loyal fans. Do um, do put them into the comments. There. Um, I swear, it, it. I was I was talking to his people, and it all seemed hunky dory. We did all planned out for this Monday. I apologised about last week's mix up, but they seemed very understanding. So, yeah, uh, I have no doubt that this this should go off without a hitch, and uh, Stephen should pick up any time soon. Now, hello, hello. Hello, 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 Stephen. Stephen, I, Stephen, I think you have an issue with your your internet again. Nice to be Is here. Uh, it's great. It's great to have you, Mr. Spielberg. I, I Sir, I have the uh, memories I have. What? What was the memory you had? Uh, Mister Spielberg. I have to guess because Sam Neil was such a. Sam Neil was was a what? What? I I, what? I, I you know, don't even apologize for what? What? Well, we have apolo- a question. We, yeah, ap- apologize, but it's we're, we're not apologizing about Ms. Mr. Spielberg. Is he? We, we can't. We can't hear you. You're. 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 You've. You've got. You've gone very. You're. You're pixelated. And you're. You're. M- Mr. Spielberg. We're not. We're not getting anything now, Matthew. That's, I heard him. I heard him. I, I heard him too. I heard he. He was. He was telling a a, a really interesting anecdote about Sam Neill. It sounded. Like completely unprompted, <laughs> which was weird. Um, he sounds I, like a cat when he it's distorted like that. It, it does. It sounds so odd. Um, Mr. Mr. Spielberg, I, I, sir, I, sir, sir Spielberg, sir. Matthew, sir. I, I think I think we're gonna have to call this again. He's not, sir. sir. You, you, can can you use the Ethernet cable, not the Wi-Fi? No, I, 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 I think that's oh, all we're getting out of. This is awful. Sorry, we were so close this week. So close. Um, I can see him. I can just he's oh, like yeah. you can reach out and touch him. He's right there. Mr. Spielberg, we, we, if if you can hear us, Mr. Spielberg, we'll 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 catch up again next week. Okay, we got the occasional word. And possibly a bit of juicy goss. He's gone. He's gone. Oh. Um, I'll I'll chat to his his people and we'll we we'll, we'll sort this out. But we knew it sounded like he he was gonna. Yeah, there was some scandal about Sam Neil, as you said, unprompted. So look, we'll see. We'll see how it um how it pans oh. out. But. I, I'm really positive about this. Like, I'm not quite as down as I have been in other weeks. I know it's not great. We haven't provided an actual interview with Mr. Spielberg, Sir Spielberg, but at least I we have touch base. People, I just worry that people haven't got the patience for it, you know? Do, do you think? I mean, they... Yeah. But I, I, look, I hope that the, the people watching, they understand that we're, we're trying our best. And we've we, we've we've had him on, no? And he, he, he said a couple of words, so, you know... That it's it's legit, and we're we're trying to get him, trying to get it sorted. But you know, he, he he's not used to the internet age and all that. So he, he uh, mm. some things are, are like trying to get a smooth Skype connection. It's difficult, but we'll we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. Do, do, sh- shall we get him on next week, Matthew? Yeah. Do, do you want to try this again next wait, week? Wait. I feel yeah. Like I don't. You know, I bought this tux. Um. You know, I've bought a new tux every week for the last six weeks. Yeah, it's, it's cost so, you a pretty penny, like yeah. yeah. It's, co- it's cost me a lot. It's cost me about as much as it cost to make hook, um, which, which is a lot. Yeah, like a hundred million dollars. That's loads. Yes, so, I know. And so everyone's like, ah, oh, you know, he gets so cross. He gets so cross during mystery steam reviews. 
and it's actually like uh, I've spent a hundred million dollars. Mm. You know, like and the, and the old salaries about to dry up. <laughs> don't, don't laugh, Gollum. It's serious. I've got to pay off a hundred million dollars to Moss Bros. Sorry, I sh- I shouldn't. It was actually. It's um. I'm just getting a bit emotional. That's what. That's what happened there. Um, well, look, mm-hmm. let's we, we'll we'll get Mr. Spielberg on the show next week, and uh, yeah, we we we'll get a clear connection. I'm sure it'll be all a okay. Um, but that does just about do it for this edition of the PC Gaming Week Spot. So thank you very much, dear viewer, for viewing. Of course, if you want to do so, you're about to say, dear Matthew. Uh, well, you can follow Matthew on social right. media. Uh, you can follow him at Mr. Basil underscore Pesto and you can follow me at Cullum underscore Hearn. Also, when this video is all processed and does all the YouTube magic, uh, do leave a comment if you would like, but also like this and subscribe and ring the bell too. That way you'll be notified of future videos on this channel. As I say, at the moment, um, you know, there are a lot of things at play that have been addressed this evening. Uh, So... Uh, be patient, but things will will pan out. But regardless, and, and yes. thank you to Mog. For yes, the, for yeah. the very kind chat donation. That's yeah. very kind for my Matthews next tux. Thank you very much, Mog. Ooh la uh, la! That is uh, ten you. ten dollars. That's that's smashing. Ten dollars. That debt is going to disappear like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we but we will be back next Monday for more. PC Gaming Week Spot at 6 p.m. Uh, but now, indeed, it is time. Bid the listener, the viewer, adieu. So say goodbye, Matthew Castle. Your, your microphone's got all weird. Has it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you've turned it off. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and say goodbye, Colm Hearn Sloan. Guffall. Bye. <laughs>